So that's the fork join model of threading. There's also a more general model of threading that you can use in some situations. In that case, like before, we had the main thread becomes active once the application starts executing. Now the main thread can at some time or at various times throughout the application spawn off more threads. Those threads themselves can spawn off or create more threads. And there's really no fixed hard and fast rule about how threads are forking or joining. It's really pretty asynchronous, pretty random. Threads can go along and create threads as needed, when needed. And whenever those threads are done, they can either be joined like they had before or just simply terminate and go away. Now all of this is done through an API like Windows threads or POSIX threads. Now you can actually execute the fork join model within your general threading model if that's the way you want to program your threads. There are also methods that use the fork join model exclusively and we'll see one of those in a future module. The fork join of course then becomes a special case of the general model where it's very structured. It's creating the threads at one point working on the parallel computations and then joining all those threads at the very end of those independent computations. This is also a model that's much more easily optimized. The general model, however, is much more flexible. So if you have a very simple case where you just need threads at certain points in your code, fork join works well. But if you have other cases where the threading can be done uh, and requires much more flexibility as far as scheduling as to when threads get created and when threads are terminated and how they're joined together and which threads are waiting for which, then you want to go probably with the general model of threading. There's also a better support for task decompositions within the general threading model as well. One of the nice things about using threads for creating parallel programs versus some other method is that you can actually get into a case where you can add parallelism incrementally. What that means is that you don't have to transform your entire serial application all at once. You can find portions of your code which could be done independently and therefore can support parallelism, implement the threads at that point within your code, and then test to see whether you get a better performance or not. If you do, then you leave the threads in and go on to the next spot in your code which can actually have independent computations, add the threads and try and see if that will improve your performance as well. So you're taking your serial code and putting in the places where parallelism might help, testing it, and if it gives you better performance, leaving the thread in. If you don't get better performance, you can take the threads out. Threads are good for three different types of parallelization. Domain decomposition, task decomposition, and pipelining. And over the next few slides, we'll take a look at each one of these and how threads can actually be used to execute each different model. As far as domain decomposition goes, what we're doing is we're taking a very large data set and dividing it up into pieces and assigning the pieces and those computations that go with those pieces to an individual thread. So here in the picture we see uh, in the shared memory this large green bar, there's a dark green bar of data and we have this, the lighter green bar of data and we've taken and we've divided that up into chunks and assigned a chunk to each of the different threads that are shown here. So thread 0 has a function f which it's using to compute on the data that's been assigned to it. Thread 1 also has function f which is being used to compute on the data that's been assigned to it. And thread 2 has the same function and a different chunk of the data that's been assigned to it. In most cases you'll find that threads will be executing the same computations on the chunk of data that's assigned to them. With task decomposition we're taking independent tasks or independent pieces of the code and assigning those to be executed by threads. So in the picture here we have two functions that are assigned to thread 0, the function e and the function h, which are executed in that order. On thread 1 we have two different functions, function f and function g, which are executing in that order. Between the two threads we see the shared memory and the execution of e on thread 0 uses a piece of data that is going to be read or input into function g being executed on thread 1. This of course will require some kind of synchronization between the two threads to make sure that the data from the function e on thread 0 has been executed and written to before function g in thread 1 tries to read that data. We also see that h and g between thread 0 and thread 1 are sharing some data that they're both reading and writing to. So again, some synchronization is going to be required between those two threads when they reach that point of their execution to make sure that the data is shared correctly. With pipelining, what we have is a series of computations that are executed in order and data sort of flows through those computations. Uh, a good example of a pipeline is always an automobile uh, assembly line. 
the cars are moving through the data at each of the stations they get executed upon by putting on the wheels or the dashboard or the doors or the roof or whatever. In a computation, we're executing functions. In the slide, we see three functions, E, F, and G, and they're executed in that order, and data flows between those three functions. With threads, we can assign a different thread to each of those functions or a different stage of that pipeline. When the data comes in, uh, it's executed by the thread with the particular computation, and then those results can be stored back into shared memory. When thread one is ready, to execute function F, it can pull out the next piece of data or the next data in the pipeline from shared memory, execute on it, put its results into shared memory. And then thread two, which is executing function G, can pull out the next bit of data for its input to its computation, execute on it, and then go to the output. So from this example, we can see that we can actually be executing on three different pieces of data within the three-stage pipeline. When dealing with shared memory, everything is pretty much shared between threads. But there are certain cases where we need to have things that are actually private or only accessible by a single thread. And so we have the idea that we have shared variables and private variables, where private variables are only going to be accessed by the thread that's been assigned that private variable. And shared variables are going to be able to be accessed by any threads, but may require some kind of synchronization to make sure that we get the right values in at the right times. For the rest of this module, I want to take a look at domain decomposition and task decomposition in a little more detail and actually look at some code. What we won't actually put in the threading, we will want to look at how they're divided up and assigned to threads, and we want to see how the variables will play out too, whether variables need to be made shared or whether they need to be made private. So the first case is the domain decomposition. And here we see a loop that's going over and updating elements of the A array. Each element of the A array is updated by a function call to foo. Now our domain decomposition is on the A array itself. We have a very large array of 1,000 elements, and we can divide that up amongst two threads and assign portions of those computations which update the elements of the A array to each of those threads. Here we see that we've taken two threads, thread 0 and thread 1, and divided our loop iterations in half amongst those two threads. So thread 0 runs from 0 to 500, and thread 1 runs from 500 to 1,000, each one taking half of the array and making the updates. When we run those threads in parallel, we can actually get a speed up in our performance. Hopefully, we would try and get at least a 2x speed up, where we would run this execution in half the time it would take to run in serial. So that's how we decompose that loop and that domain into two different threads. Now, what variables in that execution need to be shared, and what variables can we make private? Since we've divided up the loop amongst the two threads, the loop iteration variable will have to be made private. We need to make this private because if we didn't, and they were executing on a shared variable, they would be stepping on each other's values and getting the wrong reference to the A array when they updated their values. Now the A array has to be shared because each thread is accessing portions of that array. Fortunately, since we've divided up the loop into non-overlapping sets of iterations, we don't have to do any coordination, but we do have to make sure that each thread has access to that shared resource. So that was a domain decomposition. Let's take a look at a task decomposition. In this case, I have a global variable E at the very top of the code. The main routine makes two function calls, F and G, which are then assigned into two different variables. In this case, F value goes into the variable J, and the value from the function G is going to be assigned into the variable M. Now, if we know that F and G are independent of each other, that means they can be executed concurrently or in parallel. We've included the code for function F and function G, and we can see that by inspection that there really isn't any reason that these can't be run in parallel. So they're independent tasks where I can assign each task to a different thread. And here we see we've assigned the execution of function F to thread 0 and the execution of function G to thread 1. But now we have to worry about what variables need to be made private and what variables can remain shared. 